Hi guys, Evan from Atlantic Outboard here. Today, I'm gonna to do your digital delivery on the 2020 Pursuit S288. First thing you wanna do when you get on board, start your battery switches up, okay? Right here, this compartment off the starboard side of your leaning post has all your switches, okay? Off to the port side here, you have your house batteries, which are gonna power your electronics and things of that nature, so we can turn those on. And then off to the starboard side, we're gonna have the engine's batteries, okay? So you simply turn those on as well, okay? Now, a nice feature about the Pursuits is they have the combination switch, okay? Now, what that means is you simply go down one click if you don't have enough engine juice to get started. Say you took the boat somewhere for lunch, someone left the stereo on, whatever. You don't, your engine batteries are drained. You simply go down one click and that's gonna join all the batteries together enough to hopefully get you started and get you home. Now, this uh, gauge right here gives you battery voltage of your house battery, okay? The rest of these switches are breakers, okay? So if you look down here, house uh, battery meter, okay? Breaker for that. Uh, house battery charger, breaker for that. High water alarm, breaker for that. So all these breakers are labeled, okay? And if one of these items don't work, the first thing you should do is check the breaker and make sure it's not popped. Um, for S288 to equip the bow thruster, your breaker's right there for that. That switch has to be on in order for the bow thruster to work, okay? And we're going to talk about the th bow thruster a little bit more in a few minutes, but that's the breaker for that. Uh, you have these additional breakers down here, seven of them, uh, that are also pretty important, okay? You have your electronics breaker. That's going to power your Garmin screens up there on the dash. You have your house main, okay, which powers all of your uh, uh, situation up there, okay? Helm main gives you power to your dash. Cockpit amp gives you power back here. Electric head. Macerator, okay, you know what those are. Those are to give power to your head compartment and things of that nature. And if you're in an area where you can overboard discharge, you need to have that macerator switch on too, otherwise it won't work. Last thing I want to talk about in here is your windlass breaker, okay? Really important that you have this breaker off when you're not using it to ensure you don't accidentally deploy your anchor while you're driving the boat, okay? Up is off, down is on. If the breaker's off and you go to try your windlass, it won't work, okay? Now, moving up to the dash. This boat is equipped with the optional Garmin package. It has twin 8612 Garmins, okay? That gives you your, uh, your, your GPS, your fish finder, radar, anything you want, you can get on there, okay? Yamaha screen is right here. This screen simply pops off like that, okay? Uh, gives you all your engine data. That'll give you your fuel economy, fuel flow, hours on the engines, RPM, speed, fuel level on the boat. This has everything to do with the motors you need right there, okay? Jail audio, this boat's equipped with a jail audio, best of the best sound system. Uh, hit the power button right there, you can adjust your source like that. Everyone asks me, how do I hook it up to my phone? Simply go to Bluetooth, check it on your phone. The code could be M1100S. If that pops up on your Bluetooth, that's the one you want to select, and that'll allow you to uh, get music on the boat. Uh, talking about our panels right here, you have your horn button. Okay, nav and anchor light, nav's are red and green in the front, anchor light's up on top. Tow light, we'll talk about that in a minute, that's an additional light up on your mast. Uh, cockpit light lights up the floor, uh, hard top lights are right here, okay, they're red, white, and blue lights. Here's a quick tip, if the lights ever get out of sync, meaning say this one's red, this one's blue, that one's white, for whatever reason, you simply hold that button for five seconds and that resets it, okay, and that allows all the colors to be the same. When you want to change colors, you simply hit them. So it'll be red, click it again for white, click it again for blue, click it one more time, and the lights will turn off. Okay, uh, spreader light, spreader lights in the front and the back, that's your switch right there. If your boat's equipped with underwater lights, that's the switch right there. Okay, mid-level lighting, which this boat's equipped with, is blue LEDs up there in the bow area to lighten up the mid-level of the boat. Uh, deploy and retrieve, that's for your anchor windlass, so you control your anchor from here or at the bow, and we'll talk about that once we get up there too. Uh, an accessory switch right here. Say your boat uh, had an extra feature you wanted to add, like a spotlight, we would power that to that accessory switch right there. Aft bilge, okay? Uh, each bilge has a float switch and they're hardwired to the battery, meaning if your battery switches are off, your bilge pump will still work. Now, a float switch is something that senses water and what kicks on your bilge pump, okay? If that ever were to fail or you wanted to bypass it for whatever reason, you simply hit that aft bilge pump right there and it would work. Fresh water, if you want your head to work or you want your fresh water shower to work, you have to hit that switch right there, okay? Wash down, that's your raw water wash down. Say you're fishing and you get blood on the boat and you want to rinse it off, 
you simply use your raw water. I recommend using your raw, raw water because you have a limited supply of fresh water on the boat. There's only The tank's only so big. So if you're fishing, get blood on the boat, rinse it off with some raw water. Live well, if you want live well to fill up with water, you simply hit your live well uh, button right here. Wiper engages the windshield wiper. Uh, windshield washer, if you want to rinse it off with uh, fresh water, you can do that right there. This bow uh, comes equipped with twin 300 Yamahas, it means it has power steering. If you want your power steering on, you hit that switch right there. If you want to turn it off, you hit it right there. And then you have two accessory switches off to the starboard side of that bottom uh, row of switches. So again, if you want to add a uh, different accessory, a spotlight or something like that, a uh, FLIR, we can power it via that way. Uh, bow thruster, this boat has the optional bow thruster on it. If you want to engage your bow thruster, you have to have the switch on at the breaker, you break around at the switch panel, okay? Then you hit this button right here, and with that breaker on, that green light will pop on. Okay, now the bow thruster, you go this way, turns about that way. You go this way, turns about this way. All right, so I'll just turn left, push the bow left, right, turns to the right. You only use the bow thruster when you're docking. The bow thruster does not work when the boat's under speed. Okay, so the bow thruster is strictly for docking. And when we do our on-water demo with you, we'll get to practice with that a little bit as well. Uh, this boat has a tilt steering wheel right here, okay? You simply push in this lever and adjust the steering wheel like so uh, to start your Yamahas, okay? You turn the key in the on position, okay? You can see your control box lights up, meaning it's, you have got power to it. You have to have this lanyard on right here. If this lanyard is not on, the boat won't start. And the point of the lanyard is you take this right here, this side, okay? Clip it to yourself. Okay, and if you were to ever fall overboard, like so, it would detach and it would shut the boat off. Okay, it's a safety thing. It's important to wear. We really strongly recommend wearing it all the time. Okay, now when it comes time to start your engine, with the four-stroke Yamaha 300, you have push buttons. So start and stop. Make sure your engines are in neutral. If they're not in neutral, they won't start. And you push the button once to start it and push it once to shut it off. Okay, each engine has its own button. So the port motor, push it there. Start motor, push here. Okay. And to shut them off, you do the same thing. After that, you could shut your key off, and that'll kill your gauge. Okay, your gauge is going to turn on with your data once the engines are running. Trim tabs right here. Trim tabs are meant to level the boat left to right. A lot of people think they're helped to get up the boat up on plane. On outboard boats, they're not. They're strictly meant to get the boat left to right. So if you're fishing with three of your buddies, and they're all off to one side, and the boat's riding like this, right, because you're off on the starboard side, you would simply push bow down, on the port side, and that will level the boat out. That's the, that's the point of the trim tabs right there. Moving over here, you have a glove compartment. Okay, what's nice about this, it has a 12 volt plug right here, or USB plugs right in there if you want to charge your phone. Moving to the bow of the boat, let's talk about the head compartment. Okay, right here, this is your uh, AC panel for when your boat's plugged into shore power, okay? This boat has the optional shore power uh, option, battery charger. Right here, 120 volt main. So if that breaker's off, no power is going to come into the boat, okay? Battery charger, if you want your battery charger on, you have to have that switch on right there. Accessory, again, if you were to add an accessory that required AC voltage, you got to have that switch on right there. And then outlets. If you want your outlets to work in the boat when it's plugged in the dock, you need to have that switch on right there. Okay. Now, let's talk about the head itself. Right here is your macerator. Okay. So if you were to pump overboard, if you were in far enough away offshore where you can do that, you would simply use that macerator switch and that would let you pump overboard. Now, for the head compartment, you have your toilet right here. Okay. And if you were to flush it, there's prompts right here. So you have normal flush water saver, water only, okay, and empty only. So if you're using it for the last time of the day, you're going to go empty because you don't want water sitting in there all the time, okay? If you want to use it normal, you just strictly use a normal flush. Uh, you can fill it with water, or if you want to spill water only, you can do that all using this, this uh, panel right here, okay? Talking more about the head, you have your fresh water sink right here. You have to have your fresh water switch out the dash, which we spoke about earlier. Toilet paper holder right here. Okay, right under my arm. And then right here you have a bow filler piece that stores up underneath uh, this stairwell right here. We're working our way up to the windlass area. Okay, so your windlass can be controlled from either the helm, 
or up here. In your owner's bag, you're gonna have a gray remote that plugs into this latch right here. Okay, where my finger is. You can control the windlass from there or the helm. Now, when it comes time to use the windlass, you have to remove the safety chain like I've just done. When you're not using the windlass, it's really important that you have the safety chain on. That way it ensures the anchor is not gonna fall out uh, or deploy by accident if there was a issue with the windlass, okay? Now, deploy the anchor, okay, till you get to an appropriate level where you're comfortable and you're not dragging anchor. When you do that, grab the line, let out another couple feet, and tie it off to this cleat right here. The point of a windlass is to simply uh, deploy and retrieve. It's not meant to hold you in place, okay? So it's really important that you relieve the pressure off this once you're anchored. Tie the rope off to here, and you won't have any issues. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, there's a wash down right here with a quick connect fitting, okay? In your owner's bag, you have a white uh, curly hose with a quick connect. You plug it in that side and you can rinse off your windlass, which I recommend doing after every use. Okay, in front of the console, in this floor compartment, this is your bow area underneath the deck, okay? So, right here, this is your holding tank right here, okay? Um, Right here is your battery, ba uh, excuse me, your bow thruster battery right under my legs, okay? So your ba bow thruster is run off a battery, okay? That's why it's important to have the house charger when you have it. So when you plug your boat in at the dock, you turn that on and you can charge your batteries like that. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the back of the boat. But your bow thruster is right here, right under where my feet are, okay? Really no reason to access that. The battery is the most important part, okay? Moving over here, okay? Right there, you see that head overboard discharge. If you notice right here, the through hole is shut and it's zip tied shut. That's a Coast Guard regulation so you don't accidentally overboard discharge your waist. If you were to overboard discharge your waist, like I said earlier, you're within legal distance to do so. You cut the zip tie, open that through hole so it's the, the green bar is not perpendicular to the hose, okay? Hit that master to switch and you'll be able to pump your waist overboard. As soon as you come back to an area where you're not allowed to pump out, though, you need to re-zip tie that per, per Coast Guard regulations. If you see these right here, these are all dra deck drains. So if it rains or water gets in here, they go down this black hose. And if you notice, it goes right out the boat. Nothing drains in the bilge on the pursuits. Everything goes overboard. If you ever needed to shut this through hole off, you simply close it like that. The nice thing about the Pursuit S288 is the two huge fish boxes up here in coolers, okay? They're insulated, they drain overboard, they simply open by using the T-hatch landle right under there, okay? The backrests for this area are really nice too. If you want to activate the backrest, you simply lift up, locks down like that. If you want to get them out of the way, you lift up again, slide it out, and it locks out of the way. If you want to get them out of the way completely, you just lift up and you can bring them, put them home at your garage or whatever. Okay, now let's work our way towards the back of the boat. Right here, you're gonna notice this is your waist pump out section. So if you use the head on your boat, the waist goes into a holding tank and you need it pumped out, this is where you do it, right here, okay? Wherever you get fuel, uh, they should have a waist pump out station there for you. Working our way back, you have your dive door right here. This is a really nice feature. You lift, push that in right there, lift up, slide it back, and it locks in right there, okay? Really nice for getting on and off the boat. Uh, awesome feature, I'm really glad they did this on this model. Okay, there's a little latch right here. You simply push it in, and you can open this back up like so, okay? Now you have two seats in the stern of the boat right here, okay? This one pulls forward like so, and this one does the same thing, okay? Nice if you're cruising around and not fishing, if you were to fish, Easy to shut them, you just push them back in. You have two fish boxes in the floor right here, okay? One on each side. Really, really nice, uh, good size box on this boat. They also have pumps to pump them out. So say you get water, say you put some fish in there, they bleed out, you get some water in there. There's a switch on your dash that can pump them out uh, using a, a, a pump to pump them overboard, okay? So it pumps them dry. Now, let's talk about our bilge. Really, really clean builds from Pursuit. They do an excellent job um, in terms of their, their, their builds construction in every aspect. Um, the nice thing about them is everything is labeled, okay? So you see bait well pick up right there, okay? That's for your live well. If that's through valves closed, which it is now, which you can see because this green bar is perpendicular to the hose, no water is going to get in the boat. If I want to open that, 
I just go like this right here, and that'll allow water to come in the boat. Okay, that pump right there is your water wash down pump. Okay, looking in the back, you're going to see your bilge pumps. Okay, back there, you're going to see your power steering pump over there. Okay, there's your Dometic head pump right there. Okay, right here are fuel valve, uh, fuel filters and balls. Okay, now if you look here, you have red, and green. Okay, red is port for your port engine. Green is for your starboard engine. Okay, so this one's for your port motor. This one's for your starboard motor. Okay, now if we lift these pins right here, this is going to give us access to our fuel tank sending unit right there. That's your sending unit right there. Now, each pickup for your engine is right here as well. So you can see green, that's for your starboard motor. Red is for your port motor. Now, if you ever, for whatever reason, wanted to stop fuel flow access to your motors from the tank, all you need to do is this right here. You just shut them like that. That's going to not allow the motors to suck fuel out of the tank. I don't know why you would do that. Um, there's one fuel tank in this boat, so they're both going to draw off it evenly. But if you ever needed to, that's how you do it right there. Okay? So we leave those open. Your fuel tank's under there. Really no need to go in there unless there was a problem, uh, at which you would mo more than likely consult your dealer anyway. Let's put these pins back in. Now behind me, behind the door right here, is uh, an important feature. This is your cockpit lights. Okay, so if you look and light up your floor right there, you can control that from here or from the helm. Your fresh water shower, say you went for a swim or whatever, you want to rinse your reels off or yourself, this is fresh water shower. Now again, that fresh water switch has to be on. Right here, raw water, that hose I was telling you about up in the bow, you simply plug this in here. Okay, and that controls your raw water wash, and again, that pump has to be on. These real rod and reel holders are a nice feature. These are reel protectors right here, so your reels aren't banging against the side of the boat. Moving to the back. Now, in the back of the boat, we have our cooler right here. Okay, now this lifts up, okay, and gives us access to our batteries. Okay, so you have an engine battery, one for each motor, and the house battery, and then your bow thruster battery in the front. This right here is your isolation transformer really nice feature Pursuit has in this boat. That means if the boat's plugged into the dock and something were to happen on the dock side of the boat, meaning it got hit by lightning or another boat next to you had a severe issue, this prevents any damage from happening to the boat. Really, really awesome feature. I'm glad they offer it on this boat. Um, right here is your breaker for your uh, 110 power. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about shore power. Shore power is when you plug the boat from the dock to the boat and what that does is it allows you to charge your engine batteries or use your uh, outlets in the boat or whatever without sacrificing engine battery life or house battery life okay how that works is you unscrew this right here okay lift that up there's three prongs you plug it in and then you plug it in at the dock side okay and again if you have your charge uh, battery charger on that's going to allow you to charge your batteries uh, whenever it's plugged in which is, which is recommended if you're not going to use the boat for a long period of time. So in the uh, port corner of this boat, we have your live well, okay? This opens up like so. You have two fills, uh, and your owner's bag will be the drain plug. So if you need that filled water, uh, that'll be in there as well. Let's talk about the engines for a second, okay? Twin 300 Yamaha four-strokes, uh, break-in period, okay? Um, first 10 hours, you need to vary the throttle speed every five minutes. Okay, so every five minutes, vary the throttle speed. If you're cruising at 3,000 RPM, you need to bump it up to 3,500, bump it down to 2,500, doesn't matter as long as you're varying the throttle speed. And don't go wide open until after 10 hours. After 10 hours, you can run the boat however you want. Again, you can go wide open throttle. You can go 4,000 RPM all day long, okay? At 20 hours, our dealership recommends you do a 20-hour check. Our, when we do it, we do an oil change, do your oil filters, and we do your gear oil as well. Also, we give a multi-point inspection on the motors to ensure you have years of longevity use out of it without any issues, okay? In terms of the motors, uh, 89 octane is the fuel you want to burn in it. Um, it's a four-stroke, so there's no choking. There's no carburetor. It's all fuel injected. You simply push the button, and if it doesn't start, there's a problem. Uh, best motors on the market. One thing I do want to talk about is flushing out the engine, okay? Engines, I should say. You'll see right here that there is a... 
uh, cap. This, what happens is this screws off like so. It's on there pretty tight, so I'm getting her off. You can see someone already flushed it once for us, which is nice. You take your hose, okay, you keep this yellow O-ring in there, you take your hose and you screw it into here, okay? Now, what that does is it, once the motor's on, or excuse me, once the hose is on, engine's off, engine's tilted up, it flushes the water through the motor, gets all the salt out of there. Now, if you're a fresh water, you don't really have to worry about it. But with our salt water guys, it's really recommended we flush our engines out after every use. Okay? Now, when you're done, after about three, four, five minutes, you screw that back on, do the same on the other motor, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is Evan from Atlantic Outboard in Westbrook, Connecticut. Hope you enjoyed your digital delivery on the Pursuit S288.